Amanda Seuss. I'm a wedding photographer here on YouTube to help other photographers live their best life doing what they love, right? And I also am on YouTube to help couples plan their wedding to be picture perfect. But this video is really geared towards photographers. And as you can tell from the title, do's and don'ts for wedding photographies. I kind of went back and forth on do's and don'ts. Uh, if I missed anything, please drop a comment below because there's gonna be other photographers watching this video and reading the comments and like looking for suggestions to help them have a successful wedding photography business. And uh, I'd love to hear what everyone has to say. Now, just to give you a little background, I've been in the wedding business since 2017 to be exact, but 2018 is made, making it like a full-blown business. Long story short, and I think I know a thing or two about what to do and what not to do as a wedding photographer. And one of the first things I wanna cover is what to do. And what to do is you're gonna need two cameras, always on a wedding day, and you're gonna need multiple variety of lenses. Now, there's a whole video on that. You can click the link below or above, wherever it is on this video or in the description to view those suggestions and learn more about the gear. I think a lot of wedding photographers think they could just shoot on the wedding day, deliver, and that's all they need to do. But really there's a lot more that goes into a business. So there are a lot of programs out there to successfully run a business. And there's another video link below that you can access what the programs I recommend for a wedding photography business. I think you need a CRM so you can keep track of all the expenses, the profits you're making, the invoices, the contracts, and email communication with your clients. So I use HoneyBook, I highly recommend HoneyBook. Uh, I have a really cool code that you can click on below that will give you a discounted offer on your HoneyBook account. So if you wanna try that out, click the link below. All right, so you're gonna need that as a wedding photographer to keep track of all that kind of stuff that you need to run a business. If you don't have a CRM, you need to be super organized and maybe you're just starting out your wedding photography business. So Google is a really good program, Google Drive um, for business. And that means like you get the Word option, the Google Docs option, you got the Google Sheets, which is basically Excel and it saves it all on there for programs. So you can really keep track of all your clients and the projects that you have ahead before you move on to a CRM. Another thing is you need to really keep track of that accounting. So I also sell uh, uh, and teach you how to use um, a Google Sheets template so you can keep track of all your accounting records and that you need to send to your tax person. Click the link below for that. And if you don't do that kind of stuff, uh, you can really fail as a wedding photographer if you're not really being focused on your business and really seeing where things are getting, going, like money, um, how you're communicating with your clients, the contracts they're sending out, uh, anything for tax purposes so you can write off things um, and save money at the end of the year or even make money at the end of the year. But it's a business that you're running as a wedding photographer, so do not slack on the business side. And that means like being at the computer, you know, five out of seven days of the week. It's a grind being a wedding photographer. So if you're gonna be one, be one right, be a business owner. Um, it's not all about shooting the weddings. So what you should not do is, uh, that, should, that actually comes off wrong. You should always collect a retainer before booking any kind of project. Uh, and that secures the date, that secures your services, come up with a payment plan for your clients, and there needs to be a contract, always a contract. You need a certificate of, uh, of insurance to work up most wedding venues, so make sure you secure one of those. I use Hiscox Insurance. So on the wedding day, you may uh, interact with guests or the couple or anybody that's there in the wedding party, and they might suggest like, hey, can you take a photo of us in this really super bright area that has a lot of contrast, and, uh, but it's beautiful background, but they're in the shadows and everything else is super bright behind them, right? I mean, take the photo regardless, do that, you're gonna show them how it looks so you can let them know, hey, I think there's gonna be a better lighting scenario over here. And usually that's in a shaded area where the ground is lit up and usually it's like a sidewalk or something like that to really um, make 
it look like a professional image. Unfortunately, with backdrops, with beautiful scenery, sometimes, and the sun is hitting that, and then it's shadows on their faces, or or it's noon or something, still shoot it, because that's what they want, but show them that there is a better option for a professional image, because you still want to give them what they want, but you have to also show, like, hey, I'll do this, but as a professional, I think this is going to be a better quality image, and you'll see, you'll see how much they understand that you're the professional and trust you with your vision and what you think would look good. Now, uh, there are times during candid moments, because if you're like one of those photographers that want to capture just like the beauty and like staging and guiding them, but there's going to be candid moments that happen, don't forget to shoot it regardless. Even if there's a freaking light stand in the way, still shoot it because it's so amazing. And then... If you know Photoshop, you can learn that uh, in your career or pay someone else to do it. Uh, it's not a must-have to learn, but there are ways to mask out uh, light stands that are in a shot that it's a perfect moment. And uh, there's actually a video below that I show an example of when I did that. Uh, this is for all types of photography projects, so this could be like engagement shoots, weddings, all that kind of stuff. Um, there are going to be moments that it can kind of get a little awkward during a session where there's no talking. Do not stop conversation. Like, keep going with the conversation. Always bring up, like, asking them questions like, how did you guys meet? What do you guys like to do for fun? What's the wedding going to be like? Always keep the conversation going because you don't ever want it to get quiet between the couple and you. And it, it just seems a little awkward and we don't want that. We want them to have good vibes throughout the session and you photographing that and uh i find that the couple becomes more comfortable with you with your shooting them when you're trying to get to know them okay so don't let it get awkward and definitely keep guiding them through the session little activities or conversations that they can have so it's going to be a really authentic moment that you're capturing so uh before the wedding day you're going to need to create timelines for couples photography timelines whether you send out a questionnaire a few months before the wedding and then you create a photo timeline based on that or from the initial call just because they need direction this is their only time they're shooting or they're only having a wedding and they are looking to you for guidance and unfortunately wedding photographers sometimes duel as a planner so you have to take on that task as a wedding photographer so do plan to take on more than your title as photographer. Don't forget, don't forget to pack lots of water for you. Lots and lots of water bottles should be nearby for you because you will be so dehydrated by the reception time. And last thing is after the wedding, you're going to want to communicate with your couples like, hey, expect your photo turnaround to be this time because sometimes they forget they signed their contract a year prior to their wedding so they don't really look at it again there's too much stuff on their mind so just remind them in a nice email after being like hey we really loved your wedding day like this part like was super amazing I, I will never forget it and it was so nice to meet you guys and be there for you guys whatever you want to say but make sure you leave uh, a little note about how long until they can expect any photos. Um, I do recommend you send sneak peeks within a week of their wedding, but whatever you can handle, um, just make sure you let them know there's clear communication and meet those deadlines. Actually, exceed expectations and you'll have an amazing review from your couples if you can exceed expectations. So under promise and over deliver, guys. Okay, I think I have covered a lot of things here on the do's and don'ts. I kind of went back and forth on do's and don'ts, and uh, if I missed anything, please drop a comment below because there's going to be other photographers watching this video and reading the comments and like looking for suggestions to help them have a successful wedding photography business, and uh, I'd love to hear what everyone has to say. All right, guys. Best of luck out there. Keep doing what you love, and um, thanks for watching. I have an Instagram channel. Click below, or you can see the handle, Sue Smith's Moments Weddings, or you can go to my website and uh, follow me, subscribe on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Mwah. Have a wonderful day.